because you teach U of T, you have students. So I still want to talk about identity. The identity that is sourced from the inside, that we explore from inside who we are and express, and the identities which those try to impose from the outside or dictate or valueize or whatever. So this country is in this experiment, self-acknowledged, self-directed experiment to try to not follow the old rules about identity, to try to create a new paradigm of identity. We're doing okay, we're not doing great, but we're doing it, so to speak. In your students in your class, how do you see them walk those lines of who am I, what country am I, is this equal? Are we equal voice? Have we restored with First Nations? Are we building a new idea outside of the old colonial ideas or inherited ideas of Five Eyes? Or how, where are they in that journey? I think that they are a very impressive generation uh, in terms of their openness to uh, persons of various different identities, sexual orientations, uh, religions. I do believe that uh, uh, the younger generation, the millennials and, and younger, uh, are more open. And we can see that in terms of rates of, of interracial marriage, um, which, which are increasing uh, uh, greatly in this, in this country. And I think that the census reports as they come out, especially on the 2016 census, will make that point very clear. Uh, we often forget that that Toronto, the greater Toronto area, Toronto itself, is no longer a, a site of visible minorities, but a site of a visible majority. Uh, and the fact that that visible majority is still not yet reflected in legislatures, still not yet reflected in terms of economic power, is a point of contention that will have to be dealt with in the next uh, is it reflected couple of decades. In the way that we think about ourselves? Slowly but surely, yeah. Uh, I think especially in terms of media reflections of who we are, in terms of colorblind casting, in terms of what kinds of programs are being produced, in terms of who gets to host what on, on a radio program or a TV show, and so on. I think we are beginning to, to recognize and see ourselves more and more as who we are, especially in the urban areas and Canada is and has been a largely urban country since the 1920s. So part of the sidebar of what I'm trying to angle at is how do we defang, depower the external opposing, the imposition of this is what identity is, exposed inter externally to promote and allow the internal versions of who we actually are. To actually become the operation, as it were, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a beautiful question and, and a terrific insight because what I think it calls upon artists to do is to uh, uh, reinterrogate the history, and that's been and that has been going on, particularly in terms of uh, settler indigenous relations, and to try to understand how is it that uh, that uh, Edward Cornwallis is. Uh, not necessarily to be revered for having founded Halifax as a military outpost of the British Navy, uh, but rather as a person to be uh, 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 criticized uh, uh, tremendously for having put forward the notion that Indigenous people deserve to be scalped. Uh, in other words, he proposed genocide. Uh, for the Mi'kmaq Mi'kmaq Nation uh, in Nova Scotia, and so as much as anybody might want to say, well, hurrah, hurrah! He founded Halifax, 1749. That's all very well and good, but here is also uh, a gentleman who was able to counsel um, processes related to genocide, and that uh, that that had better be recognized as part of his record, as well as much as anything else. Uh, so I do think that it's important for intellectuals and, and artists to take on our history and uh, the current reality of Canada and to continuously critique, contradict, and put forward alternative visions of how the country should be or could be structured in every way, shape, and form. 